We want Descript to be as ubiquitous as Google Slides and working with Word docs, not only for these amazing media creation teams that we're working with, but also for non-media creators, you know, like more non-traditional, maybe training and learning teams or support um, and documentation teams. Just lowering the barrier to entry, I think, is super exciting from my, my point of view. Introducing Recorded Content, a podcast for small, scrappy B2B marketing teams who want to get the most out of podcasting. In each episode, we capture stories from industry experts and podcasters. Listen in and uncover what it takes to launch, run, and grow a successful B2B podcast. Check out and subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Let's jump in. Hey, I'm Tristan. I'm the co-founder of Motion and your host for this episode of Recorded Content. This show is brought to you by Motion, a done-for-you podcast agency for small, scrappy B2B tech marketers. In today's world, a company's podcast goes beyond just audio. And that's why we use the word show to describe most of the podcasts we produce for companies. But when you develop a podcast with a video-first mindset, it requires a different workflow. And that's why we use Descript at Motion. Descript sits at the center of our podcast workflow and is used on all the shows that we produce. Over the last six months, I've served on Descript's sounding board as a creator advisor. And I've had the opportunity to test Descript's latest major release called Storyboard. Storyboard is a brand new way of editing. And once again, Descript has paved the way for a brand new workflow for podcasts, especially those with a video first mindset. But what does this mean for you as a podcaster? How big of a change is it? And how does Descript's latest release improve your workflow? Well, that's exactly what we cover in this episode. As part of an ongoing series with Descript, I have Harmony Jerudek and Kevin O'Connell joining me in this episode. Harmony is the customer success manager at Descript, and Kevin is a product specialist at Descript. During this conversation, we cover why Descript decided to make such a big change to its interface and how this helps improve your podcast workflow. All right, Harmony, Kevin, welcome back to Recorded Content. Thanks for having us back, Tristan. Hey, Tristan. And uh, not much has changed with Descript since the last time we were on. Has <laughs> Same app. <laughs> same app. Same. Yep. It looks the same. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, we're kidding, of course. So actually, Descript had a big announcement this week. So so Harmony, maybe I'll start with you. Just tell me a little bit about what, what was the big news that, that dropped. Absolutely. So it was our biggest redesign in the history of, of Descript. We were calling it Storyboard. And and now it's just the new Descript, which which is nice. We um, So you're going to see a completely updated user interface, uh, much cleaner, easier to just work from the script view, not have to go down into the timeline. So many new features, uh, stock media libraries, templates, um, uh, green screen effects, uh, new video effects. So yeah, it's 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 a whole thing. Very cool. We'll get into some of the the details that you mentioned, you know, green screen being one of them. Before we do that, I wanted to talk about this this big concept that that's really folded into to the latest release or the the all new Descript, which is this concept of scenes. And and Kevin, I was hoping maybe I'll kick it to you for this one. Like what what is the concept of a scene now now that that's uh, worked into Descript? Scenes are this new way that we're imagining video editing. So instead of the standard timeline NLE editor uh, with tons of clips and granular work in stacked clip view, we're breaking up a Descript project and video edit by scenes. So kind of like our combination of standard video editing, doc, and slides. So scenes are a way of chopping up your script your video into sections and organizing your visuals into these different card views. So you can group together visuals, adjust them and manip manipulate them separately or as a group and just have a nice organized view of your video. And, and based on what you know, the, like the product development life cycle, like what was the spark that, that's that like created this new approach to, to Descript because it was already revolutionary to begin with, with the, the text-based editor. So it's like, oh, here's another level of innovation. Like what sparked that, do you think? I think there's a number of things. One is just what we were hearing from people, media creators out in the world. 
and the challenges that they're experiencing with kind of all the classic standard apps that and programs that we've been using for a long time. Uh, we've also been lucky enough to have internally at Descript a ton of really talented and brilliant media creators who also are our product developers, engineers, project managers, product managers, and we all collaborate a lot internally on what's working and what isn't. So I think the folks that are working on our engineering product and design teams really just create a clear canvas uh, and reimagine Descript from the ground up, building a new foundation for the way we organize and edit and collaborate and I think it's setting us up for some really cool uh, ideas and and features in the future as well. Yeah, and and like you mentioned, Kevin, Descript has uh, this advantage where a lot of folks, uh, I'm guessing, within the organization use it quite a bit. Like you mentioned, I'm interested in hearing from from both of you. In in Harmony, I'll kick it to you first. Like, what what was your impression of Storyboard the first time that you know you were presented with the new interface versus the the old one? Yeah. So initially I was like, hey, where all my stuff go? <laughs> to be totally honest, you know, it's like I had all of these kind of shortcuts kind of programmed in my brain, like quick highlights, clip to composition. And so you really kind of have to just rewire your brain a little bit with the updated UI. All of that magic is still there. It's just organized a little bit differently in the UI. So I think that was the, the challenge for me in terms of just rewiring, having used the classic version, you know, for about a year and a half was like getting used to that, that new experience. But then after that, you know, it, what I was really seeing is that it was another level of simplifying the, the video creation process. You know, we want Descript to be as ubiquitous as Google Slides and working with, you know, Word docs, not only for these amazing media creation teams that we're working with, but also for non-media creators, you know, like more non-traditional, you know, maybe training and learning teams or support um, and documentation teams, just lowering the barrier to entry, I think is super exciting from my my point of view. And in Harmony, what was that first project that you you kicked off in Storyboard? Was it like a tutorial video or what was the first thing that you tried to run through there? Yeah. So so to your point, I mean, we use it every day. Um, so Kevin and I use the screen recorder daily, I would say, to create quick training videos. And so, yeah, I think the first thing I made was a, a screen recording and realized like there were a couple little things I needed to recalibrate. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, how about you? What was what was it like the first time you you opened Storyboard up? It took some rewiring of my brain. I had to reimagine how I approach my workflow from the start. And once I did that, I, it just opened up so many possibilities. I'm working far faster than I was before and leaning less on granular changes in the timeline in my first 75% of my workflow, 80% of my workflow, and being able to organize quickly, drag and drop, B-roll, score, whatever it is, and uh, feel much more organized in the long run. And then still having the timeline to go in and make, you know, granular edits if I need to and freeze frames and phase or volume automation and whatnot, but not relying on that as my first point of contact with my edit. Yeah, and it's interesting because like I come from a background of video first and a lot of what we did, I mean, what we've done for over a decade is like this concept of an audio visual script. It's like you, you write the script, but then you have two columns and you have, here's what's being said, or here's what you hear. And then here's everything that you actually see. And so I, I thought for me, it, it was, it was hard to, you know, rewire my brain, like, like you all said, but then I started thinking about it in those terms where it's like, okay, I actually see everything side by side now. So it is familiar if you just approach it that way. I, I will have to admit, though, I, I did find myself jumping into the timeline to just tweak certain things. And, and when I was using beta versions, sometimes the timeline would not be available in, in different releases that we had. And I was like, oh, no, how, how could I do this? And, <laughs> and um, so I think it's, it's good. It, it's, it just gives you a chance to, to think about your projects in a different way and, and just really attack it from a, a video first or a visual first mindset, but still having the content there. And 
And that said, I'm curious, like Harmony, I know you're, you're working with customers a lot on, on the front lines there. Like what, what's some of the early feedback that you got when some of the beta users were, were using this and, and testing it out um, in, in the first wave there? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, most of it was just navigating the new user interface. It's, you know, people were seeing, hey, I can still edit my audio and video like a Word doc. Cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was mostly like, where did my project files go? That's in the media drawer now, or, oh, I see that the properties panel has changed slightly. So there's some little intricacies, like if you click on the scene versus the canvas, that will change your properties over on the right. So I think a lot of it for existing customers was just kind of recalibrating and understanding where everything had been migrated to. And so, you know, I think the the important thing for Kevin and I is just ensuring that, you know, workflows don't break. People know where to access their their projects and their files and yeah, getting everything kind of restored to you know normal normalcy. <laughs> and and I know you're you all, like you mentioned, Harmony, you're you're doing a lot of screen recordings every day. There's a lot of information out there. Like what's the easiest way for someone to transition to storyboard? Like I know I noticed um just yesterday or the day before, when you go into Descript now, there are like some tiles at the top that, that provide some introductions, like, you know, check this out mm -hmm. is for an introduction on, on storyboard and what's changed. But like, what's the best way for someone that has been using classic view for, for a while and, and they're used to that format? Like, where, where do you go from there? Yeah. So our help documentation uh, center has been completely revamped and there's a section specifically on mm -hmm what has changed. So I think that's a, a great jumping off point. It's an article specifically covering what was previously in Classic and where all of that is now in, in Storyboard. We're also creating a bunch of video tutorials as well. We're throwing some things up on our YouTube channel. Andrew, our CEO, is doing uh, Discord uh, office hours for the next few weeks. So definitely encourage folks to go check those out. Kevin, what am I not thinking of? I mean, that's it. I think I'll just jumping in and jumping in with an open mind and trying to forget everything you know for a second, see what it feels like, see like what is intuitive, what is not, and share that feedback with us. Uh, we've kind of alluded to it a little bit, is just with the design of a new interface and a new product like this, we've gone kind of in this pendulum swing where sometimes we've gone too far and removed the timeline. Other times we didn't do enough of a change and it was pretty similar to classic or a standard NLE. I think we've landed in this really cool place where the power of Descript is there. The power of all the AI features are there, whether they're front and center or under the hood. And also this ease of use has been brought to the surface where anybody can create video and audio now without having to have extensive training or, you know, going to school for or anything like that. Yeah, and I will vote to keep the timeline there, even if it's, if it's hidden by default or whatever. Um, I still have to, I don't know. I'll I don't second just, that. I'll I'm second an old that. guy that, that I, I just need the comfort that it's there. So so one thing, and I had this question, and Harmony, I know we were on, on a call or something maybe a month or two ago where we were talking about like what happens with classic projects and then storyboard projects. And I know some folks have been asking me about that on our team along the way. So... Talk to me a little bit about projects that exist now in Classic. Like, are those migrated? Do, do folks have to do anything differently? How does that work? Yeah. So first off, no one needs to do anything right away. Your Classic projects aren't going to be taken away from you or migrated immediately. But the goal is to eventually completely migrate away from Classic and everything being moved over to this new user interface. Um, so there is going to be a short period of time where folks can still work in their classic projects, even create classic projects. But then, as, as I mentioned, you know, we're, we're eventually going to move away from that. So, and um, everything will eventually be in the new user interface. And how about, because I was having a conversation with a, with another podcasting agency this week and they're, they're mostly just audio. So we were talking about, you know, some of the changes in Descript and so forth. So what, what impact is there to just the audio only projects? Like how will those be, I guess, envisioned in, in the new Descript? Yeah. So producing audio in Descript is still the same great experience with a couple added bonuses. 
We've definitely prioritized video in this release to be transparent, but we feel like we've brought the video edit the video editing capabilities of Descript up to the same level as audio, and at the same time brought them both up very substantially. So with audio, something that we're not really advertising, but we'll let you in on a little secret is, and this is for audio and video, just collaboration in general, is live collaboration is now just unleashed and we are able to have multiple people in a project at once, ideally hitting far fewer collaboration conflicts, but Harmony and I have worked on a bunch of projects together and we've been importing, transcribing, recording, editing, all at the same time, seeing each other's changes in real time, and it's been incredible. So we know that audio teams typically work with a lot of folks on an edit at once, um, pulling selects, writing around those selects, fine tune editing. So that's a huge, a huge plus. We also have that stock media library, which includes fully licensed music sound effects usable for all creators. And I'm forgetting something. Sorry. Uh, write mode. So write mode. yeah. So, so previously. In classic, you know, when you need to make corrections to your to your transcript, you hit the you would hit the E key. Now you hit the C key, correct it. But you can then also switch out of correct mode into what we're calling write mode. So this allows um, users to write around their tape. So if they're you know needing to script out particular sections for their host, they can just switch to write mode and they could even use overdub, you know, you know, switch it into their host voice, hear it in their, um, in their pacing and then switch back out of write mode back into edit mode. So it should be easy now to switch out of those three modes, um, qu quicker and easier. Yeah. And I have to admit, uh, I actually cheated the other day. So I, I screwed up on a question that I asked someone and I used my overdub voice to, uh, to ask it in, in a much better way <laughs> in the episode. So, uh, that was great. I, I created a, a trained voice, obviously we're talking about overdub to where, you know, they can use, what is it like a 15 minute recording, I believe, or something like that, 15, 20 minutes, and then it'll create a voice for based on that. Right. Exactly. So all you really need is 10 minutes plus your voice ID. Uh, ideally you'd, you'd submit somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes. That's kind of the sweet spot to hit that maximum production quality level of, with your overdub voice. All right, cool. Yeah, I might try to do, I'll, I'll like try it again. I just had a handy um, episode that was like 15 minutes long and I sent that. So I might, I might try it again to get a little bit more of that detail, but it worked out pretty well. And um, I felt better about the the question that I asked. It, it was just, I fumbled over my words and I was like, man, I really wish I would ask this in a different way. So I was able to cut away from myself, use the voice. We use motion graphics over top and I thought it worked pretty well. So that was handy there. Well, so let's, let's go back to, you know, we, we talked about scenes and kind of the, the benefits there, but like, I'm just curious, like what, what is the impact with, with the workflow now? You mentioned the live collaboration, but we're talking about scenes. Like what are we seeing from customers now with, with the workflow now that they've gone through some of these projects? Like what, what is the, the feedback that you're hearing? So one thing that we're definitely hearing with scenes is that folks are now able to visualize their edit points uh, in the script before you know you, you pull in maybe some b-roll you see that added track down in your timeline and one thing that kevin alluded to earlier is that instead of thinking about these as tracks we're now thinking about these as layers so it's much easier now to just focus your attention on the script and see those layers applied in within those scenes as opposed to you know having to look in two different places it's all organized kind of in one one linear script um, but yeah, Kevin, I'd love your, your take as well. Yeah. And I also just think our pre-production process for, for teams and individual users has expanded greatly where you're writing narration or script or show notes, and you're able to organize and build out your media far before bringing in any tape. So folks that are working on highly produced content, that pre-production process is not living in a Google Doc anymore. It can live directly in Descript using write mode or, and or overdub, also placeholder text or B-roll or audio. And you can start to really craft out your whole piece without having done a recording yet. Yeah, and that's the one thing that, that we're doing and we've tested <clears throat> with a couple shows is using the, the canvas to, to like document some ideas 
And versus before in, in the past, I would have the, the text based script and I would do like inline notes, but you didn't, it was either before the text or after the text and you couldn't really tell, or I would have to describe like what, what coincides with, with that text when I'm working with a motion graphics designer on our team. Whereas now it's literally beside it and I could just have some notes. I just drop a text field on there and, and make some notes and it is in line exactly with what's happening on the audio side, which I think is it's beneficial for us. I mean, and, and when we talk about the impact to workflow, making changes and corrections and, and like miscommunication is such a big impact when it, when it comes to, to video projects because you could do all of this work and if it's not you know, it doesn't come out as intended, then you have to kind of start over versus I, I find that this helps us get on the same page before we do this massive work in After Effects or something and mm -hmm. lay it in later. So that's just what I've seen. Definitely. So that's probably a good good segue to one of the features I wanted to talk through. And we'll, we'll shift a little bit to, to some of the other things that were included within this release in addition to scenes. And, and one of those is uh, the concept of templates. So let's start with that. Like what, what are the, the templates exactly within Descript now? Templates allow you to templatize scenes or full edit. So as you are working on a full edit and you have it broken up into scenes, you can templatize each one of those part of a larger template project and apply them to projects across your drive. Collaborators can have access to templates you've made and vice versa. And it allows you to do your design work up front whether that's specific font styles, colors, uh, bringing in motion graphics, a lot of folks do, templatizing that and slapping it on a subsequent episode and not having to apply those individually each time you're going into an edit. So a lot of times we'll sculpt out a full episode or a full piece, templatize the sections that are reoccurring, uh, each scene that's reoccurring. And when we get to episode two, three, four, or so on, we're able to access those across our drive and apply them to projects that we're working on. Definitely. Yeah, and, and one question I had within my team is, is like, how, how are the templates accessed across the drive and your, your team? Like, how does that work from a collaboration standpoint? Yeah. So the, you create a template almost exactly the way that you create a traditional project in Descript, and then you can create different versions of that template, just like you would with compositions. The only difference is that you, once you create those, then you have to publish it. So when you publish that template, you have the option of keeping it private just for you, or you can publish it to your drive. So that way everyone on your drive can benefit from that template, or you can even uh, publish it publicly and then it would get added to our, our gallery of templates, which is nice. So, you know, you might not ever need to start from scratch again. So you have like title, uh, template, intro templates, slides. So for like, um, uh, interviews, you can, it, it provides you with some different templates there. Um, this is also where our audiograms have moved. Um, so that's where you can access those uh, now as well. And before the templates, like what, what were, what did folks have to do in order to like apply these changes all over? Tell me about the pain that, that I mean, I know the pain, but I'm, I'm interested to hear from, from uh, you all. It was so kludgy. I mean, yeah. yeah. It was, um, you know, our recommended steps were to essentially build build what your ideal template would look like in in a composition and then duplicate it and then uh, essentially repopulate the media under the those templatized assets it was it wasn't super elegant i'll say that <laughs> yeah and we have to you know it's almost like a project for us we're going to go back and actually create templates for all of our shows you know we're still doing some of the copying and, and pasting just because we, you know, we have deadlines and we still have to get things done, but that's mm -hmm. going to be an initiative that uh, we're going to actually develop a project schedule for. We're going to go in, develop templates for all of our shows mm -hmm. and then, you know, see what gaps we have and things, but it's really going to help us. We're going to have to take that approach to develop them. But once we have those in place, it's really going to help us on, on the back end quite a bit. Can we give you a, a a pro tip for that process. Uh, anybody else working on it? That's why I have you on here is to, <laughs> <laughs> to get those pro tips. Well, you can certainly create templates from the ground up in your drive view and open up templates, but you can also pull from existing edits that you have in Descript. 
by just selecting the scene, copying the scene, and then going into your templates creation gallery and just pasting those in there. It'll bring along all the visuals, all of your script. So when you're applying a template to some, an interview, for instance, a raw interview you've dropped in, it's yeah. only going to add in those visual elements and music if you have that. But if you drop it into an empty project or an empty scene, it'll bring along the script as well. So if you have something that's a reoccurring intro or outro or segment, that'll bring along the, the script track, or you can just apply it to a new script and it'll bring along all those visuals. All right. Thanks for that pro tip. Oh, well, yeah. I'll get one of our uh, team members on that piece because that that's, that's going to be a, a big part of what we do there. And, and I think that the, the huge unlock for us is because customers are asking for more and more uh, like aspect ratios. It's like the, the content yeah. is very similar, but it's like, I want this in portrait style, landscape and square, pretty much for all of the short clips or promo pieces that we're doing. And, and you all know when you're distributing across all these different platforms, captions have to be in different spots. They're hidden based on whatever interface, like TikTok example, uh, LinkedIn is completely different. And and I think that's really helpful to us where you can make all of those changes to the content itself in one time and then apply like these different templates to get really three different aspect ratios in, in the matter of maybe a minute or two. Um, and, that, and that's a really big piece that, that we're able to now offer much more efficiently than what we, we could in the past. Mm. So templates are there, they're, they're accessible across the team. Let's shift to some of the, the video properties now. And, and I think uh, there's some big ones in, in this release that, that might get lost in the shuffle with uh, the change to scenes and so forth. But there were a couple that, that I wanted to just point out. But, but before we do that, just talk to me, like, what, what are video properties and, like, how do you access that within Descript? So video properties is our, our new side panel. Basically, it'll focus when you have any... B-roll selected, any video from the script selected, anything in your canvas selected, you'll show up your properties and you can change all the aspects, layout, rounded corners, new addition, and that'll auto-populate. They'll also do the same depending if you have the script selected. So if you have your cursor in the script, or if you have the scene selected by clicking the thumbnail in your script or clicking the outside of the video canvas. So you can select the scene to change scene properties, select the script to change some script properties, and then select individual visual elements to change their properties as well. And it also is, it also provides a simplified list of all of the various um, layers that you're working with. So if you're working with something that with like 15 plus layers, it will allow you to go into each uh, element and adjust the parameters of those um, uh, layers, uh, just in a simplified list view. Yeah. And that was really nice. Cause I know in some of the earlier versions, we, we didn't have that accessible. So you had to kind of, uh, work through the canvas and front to back and try to, to select a, a certain element on, on the canvas. And it, in the best way to describe it, at least how I've described it to, to some of our folks is like, it's very similar to like Photoshop or something where you have mm -hmm. your layers and, and you know, that, you know, if you pick it on the, on the right side, that that's what is then selected on the canvas itself. So that was an easy transition for us. And, and I like that because that allows you to, to get to, to really that pinpoint exactly where something is positioned on screen or, or something like that. So, um, I, I do love that part of the video attributes and, and Kevin, you mentioned rounded corners and things like that, that people take for granted in a lot of, uh, other applications, but those are nice little touches there for sure. A big one for me was was color correction. Um, so talk to me what's available with, with that piece there. Yeah. All of your standard color correction abilities for images and video, uh, all on a slider, all on a slider fader system. So going from zero to hundred and all those different parameters, but specifically uh, Harmony, do you have the, the list of color correction? In front yeah. Of you? So you can, so you just essentially go into your effects, col select color adjustments. So from there, you can um, adjust the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, saturation, temperature, which wasn't previously there. So you're going to have a lot more um, flexibility and control over the, the video elements that you're working with. 
And what's been the reaction just maybe internally at, at Descript or with some customers early on, on things like color correction? Like how, how has it changed the workflow? Like what are they doing differently now than, than what they were before? Yeah, I think the big thing is that now they're just able to stay in Descript a little bit longer, right? You know, with especially with some of the professional video teams we work with, they would do, you know, 90 90-ish percent of their uh, their edit in Descript, and then they would go out into something like Premiere. Now, with these added features, they might not even have to go out to, you know, th th those other systems. They can do their their edit end-to-end -end in, in Descript. Yeah, and that's what we've seen, too. And we've done some color correction in Descript versus, you know, using the raw footage in Premiere, adjusting it there, and then re-importing, like, replacing the file in Descript. And and I find that like with a lot of the podcasts we're doing that were that are recorded remotely, you know, the, the color correction is not gonna be that much different. You know, like if you're filming in 4K and you're in, you know, you have raw, that's probably something you want to do in Premiere or DaVinci or something like that. But I mean, for a lot of the stuff that we have, it's it's not like color grading, it's color correction. You know, you want to yeah. adjust some things like that. And it's worked out really well for us to just treat some of the footage in a way that that'll come across better without that full round trip from from Premiere. So that's definitely what, what we've seen so far. Um, Kevin, are you seeing something similar? Yeah. I mean, you know, like looking at your video now, raw recording, folks won't see this on the, on the end in the published project, but you're shooting at a lower ISO and you might be bringing that raw footage into Descript and you can do all of your exposure and correction there. And, or when you're doing a timeline export, at least chip away at some of that work before you get to Premiere. Yeah, definitely. Um, and another big, th big, big thing, excuse me, that uh, Kevin, you mentioned or you alluded to was the green screen functionality, which I think is really exciting. So, so tell me how, how that got prioritized and that got included into uh, this release as well. Yeah, I think when we were modeling what types of videos we would love to see creators making in Descript, a lot of them were green screen enabled, especially Reels, YouTube Shorts. TikTok videos, like so many of them are using background removal or green screen to just create new depth and layers in their video. And green screen and background removal became uh, a pretty high top priority from our AI team. So the folks that have designed Overdub, Studio Sound, a bunch of other AI uh, rich features in the app also developed the green screen background removal. So being able to remove your background from a standard interview, or if you're a point of view, uh, interviewing someone, selfie style video on the street, whatever it might be, just gives you so many more options to add some text behind you, put you in a different space, uh, or just be weird and creative with your edit. Yeah. And, and just to dis dis distinguish that real quick, you don't have to actually be on the green screen, right? To have the background removal. So like, how does that, how does that work? Like, how does the AI determine what's in the foreground and whatnot? Like, what are you all seeing so far? If we had the answer to the, how that works, that would be the, <laughs> the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. I know that it was designed to emulate if you were in front of a green screen. Yeah. So basically giving all of us the ability to use green screen background removal without actually having to have a green screen. So identifying background, creating a good blend between your silhouette outline and your background, as well as other things that might be in the, in the frame, having different depth behind you or having a microphone in front of you, whatever it might be, headphones. And it, and it doesn't matter the type of uh, camera that you're, you're using, it will apply that green screen effect, uh, kind of blanketed across like regardless of the system that you're on very cool yeah and that's something we haven't tested much on our side but excited to, to dive into that a little bit because you know king out certain things is um you know, pretty painful traditionally so it'll be good I, I know just with like photo background removal i mean if i go back like 10 years that it was just incredibly difficult and now you can just do that with a you know a click of a button, the whole background's removed. So that stuff's pretty cool. And it's nice to see that get translated in, into video as well, for sure. And and so back to kind of like wrap this full circle, like Harmony, we were talking about, you know, how, how you're doing the last few days. I mean, it, the, the release just came out. So like, how how's the, the temperature of the team and, and how's the, uh, the news been taken so far? How are y'all holding up? 
We're good. I, I think we're super excited, you know, burning the midnight oil a little bit for sure. Um, but I, I just I want to give a shout out to our amazing support team there on the front lines with with our customers and they're just handling it like champs. I mean, I think, you know, with it with any large changes, you're you're going to hear, you know, excitement, but then there's also going to be challenges kind of understanding where things previously were and where they are now. So I think we've got an amazing team to help us get through it and amazing creators too. Like they're showing us new ways that media can be created and innovated. So I think um, we're going to keep a close eye on that too. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun just um, playing around with earlier versions of Storyboard and, and seeing how it has evolved to, to where the public release has come out. And and yeah, just a, a shout out to support as well from, from my perspective. I mean, we were talking before we jumped on uh, I didn't realize the storyboard release was actually coming out. And then I had an issue with, there was a frame rate with my video footage and it was, it was like not syncing properly later on in the edit. And so we were working with support to figure that out and I had to retranscode the, the video footage, but all of that was happening as storyboard was being pushed out to the world. So support, I didn't even notice the difference. So uh, yeah, great job on your side for sure. And I appreciate that. Well, and thanks for being involved. Early on, too, we were lucky yeah. enough to work with you and a, a bunch of other creators on our sounding board to give feedback and experience and using the redesign for the last several weeks. So, yeah, it hats wouldn't off have to made you it for, for helping out. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. honestly, like it wouldn't have shipped without all, all of the feedback uh, up until this point. Like, otherwise, you know, who knows? We, we might not be talking about it <laughs> today. That's right. That's no, true. it's been great. And it's an advantage for us because we get to see and talk about all these changes before it gets rolled out. So like we were months ahead, you know, talking about like how we're going to adjust our workflow and how it will improve. Like the, the template project that I talked about, for instance, earlier, I mean, that's already on our schedule. We already know how we're going to do that. You know, I got some tips here to how to make that go a little faster, but it, it's already something that that's in place and we didn't have to kind of get this new release dropped on us and, and have to figure it out from there. So it's, it's helped us out a lot. So, so last question here, and I'm, you know, very curious. We we have, Descript was just innovative to begin with, with the text-based editor. And now we have the scenes. Like, what in the world is is next? Like, how can you all top the last two things that have come out? Okay. So one thing I'm really excited about in the new year is just more expanded admin controls. Um, I think this release has been all about enabling creators and teams Um so now from the back end is for you, Tristan, as the as the drive admin, want to um, give you some more features to make it easier for you to manage your team and have more insights into usage and all of that. There's also some uh, updates coming with respect to overdub. We've we've rolled out multi-language transcription. Uh, and so a big request has been multi-language overdub. So that's something that we've got on the the burner as well. Oh, very cool. Yeah, the admin stuff will, will be great. See what's included there. And and I know, Kevin, you were even talking about the live collaboration piece that you all have worked uh, pretty heavily there. I, that's something we haven't tested a bunch, um, but we, we do a lot of just fixing transcripts while making edits and, and things like that. So we've been careful not to necessarily be in the same project at the same time. So we'll, we'll test that stuff as, as well, which I think is very exciting because you can compress your timelines quite a bit and it's not as linear as it, as it has to be all the time. So, well, well, awesome. Thank you both. I mean, this is a good breakdown of, of storyboard and thanks for taking a little bit of time here. I know it's a busy week for, for you both. And, uh, this will be helpful to our customers and, and a lot of folks that, that we interact with, obviously. So, to, to wrap it up, just as a reminder, where can people go to find out more about what you guys have going on and, and yourselves? Go to Descript.com to download the app, check out the new help center, and also just our complete redesign of the website with some really cool videos. And then Kevin and I are both on LinkedIn, so just find us there. We'd love to connect with you. Uh, if you have any questions, we're, we're here to help. All right. Harmony, Kevin, it was a pleasure. Thanks for joining me on recorded content. Thank you, Tristan. Thanks.
Thanks for listening to Recorded Content, a show brought to you by Motion, a done-for-you podcasting agency for B2B tech marketers. We do the podcast stuff so you can focus on strategy, building brand awareness, and developing new relationships. To learn more about how you can launch and grow a podcast for your company, check out motionagency.io. Thanks for listening to Recorded Content. Thank you.